So one of the strengths of Cotswold Classic Car Restorations is we cater for all marks and models of car. Um, this has come about typically because our clients have car collections, you know, of all, all different marks from Jaguar to cars such as behind me, the Mercedes. It is interesting to work on all these different cars from years ago. And it's quite different from, from the corporate world we live in today where you'll find a Renault engine in a Mercedes. You just won't find that in 60s cars. And you'll find that the approach the manufacturers had to build in a car, the Jag was very much a Jag, Mercedes was very Germanic. You could see that, you know, that, that was a very different approach to their engineering. So while we're working on these cars, it's just interesting to see the approaches between the nations to, to building cars. Um, and uh, we're forever learning uh, uh, the history of this. What makes a business is the staff and we're always looking for the best staff and we're looking for people that are passionate about classic cars and engineering in general and um, typically guys will become mark specialists and, and we were very fortunate a few years ago to pick up a, an employee by the name of Gus and uh, he's our Mercedes specialist. Um, he's been here with her a few years now and it never ceases to amaze me his knowledge on Mercedes. Way back in, in, uh, in the 80s, I started my apprenticeship in Zimbabwe. I was with uh, Peugeot then. Um, due to the polit political situation and so on, I decided to emigrate to South Africa. And I continued my apprenticeship with Mercedes uh, of all marks. I was quite uh, daunted by the fact initially, um, but it turned out you know, to be really good because I've got an absolute passion for them. Um, so I started with Mercedes in, in South Africa in 1982 completed my apprenticeship, stayed with them for probably uh, six or seven years, um, and then moved to other work, but always involved with Mercedes, you know? So I've been with Mercedes since 1982 in one form or another. The, the current models being produced then was the W123, the 126. Uh, obviously the 124 came out just after that. Um, but, you know, the 107s were still being produced then. I was working on pagodas, you know, from the 60s. I was working on the pontons uh, from the 50s uh, because they were still everyday cars in those, those days, you know. And um, now, you know, 40 years later, I'm working on the same, same old cars, except they've uh, had a bit more wear and tear. <laughs> I moved on to Cape Town at one stage, worked with Mercedes there, uh, to Saldana Bay, still involved with Mercedes. And then I went back to Zimbabwe in 1998. Um, started my own business, specializing in Mercedes, um, and then came to the UK in 2000. Um, worked for Ford for uh, a year, and then a position opened up at Mercedes-Benz of Swindon, and I joined them in 2002. And I was with them till 2010. Um, and then started my own business, specializing in Mercedes, uh, until I joined Cotswold Classic Car Restorations in 2020. So I've, I've been with them for just over two years now and really loving it. Full restorations, nut and bolt, you know, or just servicing. Uh, obviously we've got our sister company, uh, South Cern Engineering, so they take care of all our engineering needs. Um, so it's, it's a good partnership and uh, yeah, so we can do everything in-house. It's very important to me that my clients can come in and just talk to the people that are working on their cars and if they've got specific problems related to the Mercedes or whatever, they can just come and find Gus and chat to Gus about it and he will be able to, to sort things out with them personally between each other. Um, so yeah, regardless of whatever the issue is, is or whether you need to talk about something historical, um, you know, you can just come in and, and find people like Gus and, and really get all the information and knowledge and uh, it's often things that he's come across and will be able to, to uh, set your mind at rest. The 190 SLs, uh, really interesting little cars, the W121 chassis. Um, we're doing a lot of pagodas. We are seeing a lot more pagodas and a lot more uh, W107s, which was the follow on from the pagoda. So the car I'm sitting in now is a 380 SL. Uh, a lot of people refer to it as an R107 because it's a roadster. Um, but it is still a W107. Um, I am busy with a Mercedes Z119974 engine, which came out of a E500 W124, which was a collaboration between Mercedes and Porsche in the, in the early 90s. So Porsche did the body styling, 
Mercedes did the engine. So they did the powertrain and that became an E500, strictly left hand drive only. Um, but it's, it's becoming quite a sought after classic as well. And uh, so I'm actually busy with one of those. It's for a customer in, in uh, Spain, in Barcelona. So he shipped the engine in pieces up to, up to us. And uh, so I'm busy doing a, a full uh, refurb on that one. I really cannot express enough to you how much Gus knows about Mercedes and his encyclopedic knowledge. If you doubt me on this, go and have a chat with him. Interesting thing with, uh, with Mercedes is from the chassis number, you can actually determine a lot uh, about the car. So the chassis number is made up of 14 digits. Um, first three digits de uh, denote the, the body style. So the one I'm sitting in at the moment is a 107. So the chassis will begin with 107. The next three digits will denote the model number. So this is a 107 045. So 045 is a 380. So you know that this is a 380 SL. The following two numbers will denote the uh, left-hand drive or right-hand drive. So um, and whether it's automatic or manual. So the uh, seventh and eighth digits on this chassis is 22. So from that you can deduce it's a right-hand drive and it's got automatic transmission. If it was a manual transmission, right-hand drive, it'll be 20. If it was left-hand drive, it'll start with a one. You know, so you can actually determine a lot about the model just from the first eight digits of the chassis. The last six digits is obviously just the, the production run of it. So. Um, it's a very interesting thing that you can deduce all this information from Mercedes. See what I mean? I wasn't lying.